Welcome back, everybody, to Cat to a Shoujo, episode 93. Because you got a touch, you got the power. When I hell's breaking loose, you'll be riding out the storm. You can't sing that song about closing your eyes. That's right, Transformers is on my mind. So this is episode 93, 2, 3, 4, 94. I have no idea. I've recorded about five or six of these in a row now. I'm goody. I'm kind of, I think I might just go to the end of this now. Don't mind, don't mind. So yeah, we were in the gallery and Emmy was chatting with Nomia because he didn't remember who she was. There you go. Carrying on where we were. Hi, Rin. Hello. Got your latest for your super cool art thing. I'm sure you'll be a big hit. She's turned into Misha. She throws her arms into the air for boisterous emphasis, almost hitting me in the face. Ah, crap. And look, it's came too. Rin doesn't look at me, nor does she greet me. Congratulations, Ren. She keeps averting her gaze, pointedly looking at her sandals. Oblivious to the tension between us and ignorant of what happened yesterday, Emmy keeps on blabbering about this and that to an unresponsive Rin. I guess she's used to not getting much out of her at times. Before long, Nomia and Sai return turn to Rin, introducing her. Expecting it, I catch the second of confusion when the guests see her arms. Sai is luckily on the ball and briefly explains about our school. Doubtful faces quickly change to curious. Would you mind telling us something about your art? I thought the development is quite easily noticeable, and what, what do you yourself think of the differences between the older and more current works? It's quite rare for someone so young to dabble into abstraction. It would have been interesting to see how you work. Oh, definitely. I assume you'll use your feet. Must have been a great trouble to learn it. You should be proud. I, um... Uh, will you be pursuing a career as an artist after school? She's bombarded with so many questions, she can't even hope to answer all of them. Maybe that's for the best. Rin tends to talk nonsense more than occasionally. So, where'd you get your ideas? <laughs> I'm trying to go for as many voices as I can. That's the fourth, I, I mean, fifth worst. Rin keeps stumbling with her words, looking more and more vexed by the expectant inquiries. Uh, everybody is waiting for her to say something. But they're still talking, but she looks like a cat got her tongue. Each, each question... Ah, oh, fucking mouse. Each question piling up just adds to her distress. I fail to hear the question that is proverbially one too many. It's like a motor stalling. Oh, she's broken. Rin just freezes for a long time. Long second until she falls on her knees, hitting the floor. And gracefully like a sack of potatoes. Potatoes! Are you, are you alright? I... I... I don't know. Suzuka, what's wrong, girl? I don't know what's wrong. A terrible silence falls upon the people gathered around Rin. Everyone is petrified, not knowing how to react to her sudden seizure or something. She breathes with deep, trembling gasps as if she was running out of air, staring ahead of herself with hollow eyes. Seeing that nobody does anything, I force myself to step it to Rin and lift her up from the floor, letting her lean against me to keep standing. Would you like some fresh air? Okay, let's go outside for a bit. I don't even wait for her to answer before grasping her shoulder and pulling her past the stunning look Namir, Sai, Emmy, and guests. Excuse us. Excuse us. The cool evening breeze hits my face at the door. I let go of Rin and she leans against the stone wall trying to catch her breath. You alright? I couldn't say anything. Rin is still not looking at me, so I look away too. The street lights and coloured neon signs twist my vision into a blur of near blindness, forcing me to look back. At least she talks, even if she's not directing her words to me. What did you want to say? Maybe both of us can imagine that we were talking to an invisible friend. <laughs> I don't know. Something that would have meant something? The silence lasts for a long time. I don't feel comfortable being alone with Rin. I'm not good at imagining things that don't exist, do, or that things that exist don't. We should go back in. The guests I invited are in there. They probably want to meet you and talk with you. You know, ask you questions and stuff about those paintings you work so hard for. I don't want them to ask me questions like that. I can never say the right things. What do you want then? That someone wouldn't have to ask questions from me. 
If you found someone like that, then what? That's what you asked, but aren't you happy with people interested in your paintings? But if you found someone like that, then what? Do you really think that it would be some kind of be-all and end-all thing? Star-crossed lovers and happily ever after? My question is met with a blank stare. Darkness in her eyes unfazed by the thinly veiled bitterness. No, I don't think that. But at least then I wouldn't have to be alone. She whispers the words to the lights of the town, but I hear them anyway. I shouldn't have done this. Not yet. The exhibition? She nods and closes her eyes, breathing calmly out as if to prove she can, and then continues talking to herself. Why? Wrong conjunction of the planets? <laughs> no, not that. I double-checked and I got up with the right, I mean left foot, and I did everything else left, I mean right. It's me. I was wrong. She stands straight and stretches before stepping past me out into the street. Wait, where are you going? She stops on her tracks and turns around, looking at me quizzically. School. I'm leaving. Wait, what? Why? Because I want to be me. Rin walks off, leaving me behind, utterly confused. Rin! But something she said really touched me. Maybe it's the way she said it. Maybe it was the fact that she said it. I want to say something back to her before I forget this feeling again. As if granting me a wish, Rin stops on her tracks. She doesn't start to turn around, she just keeps waiting for me to say what I want to, even though I didn't have time to think what. Rin, listen, I, d I don't believe you have to be alone, even if you never meet anyone like that. I don't know if she heard my words, but either way, she doesn't react in any way. For the final time, she starts walking away from the gallery. So, where's Suzuka? I can only shake my head, but as it doesn't seem to be a sufficient answer, I have to say something. Uh, she ran away. What? The horrific realization spreads on his face like wildfire. This is a fiasco! Catastrophe! What is that girl thinking? The most important event of her life and she just runs off? And you! Why didn't you stop her? I'm going to hold you personally responsible. Sai inter- Oh my god, he's gonna beat the shit out of me. Sai interrupts him, holding her hands up calmingly. It's good she intervened. The teacher was starting to get a few weird looks from the nearby guests. No, no, she, she, she probably just had stage fright. I don't know her as well as you people do, but I did get the image that she is somewhat peculiar. This kind of thing can happen. It'll be fine. I'll explain that she suddenly became ill. The guests will surely understand. But... Look around you. Everyone seems to be rather happy with their free wine and chit-chat. Free wine? Oh my god. The guests will be fine. We are missing our one opportunities here. Networking, making contacts and acquaintances. As the adults keep arguing about something that can't be helped, Emmy tugs my sleeve to get my attention. She doesn't look very happy either. Come on. Where? We're gonna find Rin and kick her ass. What? I can't believe it, she is so stupid. That Rin, how can she do this? I'm telling you, she doesn't have a bit of common sense in her head. Emmy is seriously angry, only missing steam rising from her ears. Where's the uh, creepy look? I guess I understand Emmy. She is that kind of a person. Give up has never felt like a part of her vocabulary. And maybe she feels it shouldn't be a part of anyone else's vocabulary. It's probably best to leave her alone for tonight. What? Are you a Rin expert now? She takes a firm stance and put her hands on her hips confrontationally. It's like she wants to pick a fight with me too. No, I don't think that's even possible in the first place. I just don't think that kicking her ass would do her any good. My melancholic remark surprisingly works as Emmy slumps her shoulders a little and sighs. I know that. You do? The last time I did that, it changed nothing. The ride back to school in an empty late night bus is silent. Both of us keep staring at the lights flashing past the windows without saying a word. The nightly grounds are quiet, lit only by the wan moon and the yellow lamp. He keeps going about the wan moon and yellow lamp posts. We say our good nights in front of our dormitory, my dormitory. Emmy reflexively clenching her fists compels me to ensure her that she won't assault Rin the moment I let her out of my sight. Promise me not to scold her. She looks at me, her eyes again flaring with anger that I must that I match with as calming as there as I can. It's only easy to face an angry woman if you are not the target of her ire. True that. <laughs> After a minute of the mismatching staring contest, she sighs and shakes her head in defeat. 
You're too, you're too nice as so. Did you know that? <laughs> no, you know. Not when he's vague. Hints of a smile are tugged at the corners of her mouth as she says that. And she seems a lot more relaxed. What a sudden change of mood. Maybe she wasn't ang as angry as it seemed to begin with. Maybe her moods change easily. If I was, I would have let you have your way. Does that mean you're only nice to Rin? Both of us are hiding our concern behind empty jokes, but at least it puts me in a good mood. Emmy waggles her eyebrow with a half-amused smirk, trying to push my buttons. Not gonna work. No, it just means I'm not I'm not only and that just means I'm not only nice only to you. Hey! Good night, Emmy. Will this be the one? I think I'll either finish this one or the next one. The last day before summer vacations is waning slowly. Science is the final exam of the trimester, and then we are free. The collective yearning for liberty is almost palpable in the classroom, even though the weather seems a tad cloudy. It might rain today. Who knows? I've already finished the test because it was pretty easy, to, uh, so I'm doodling lazily on the flip side of the paper waiting for Muto to call time. What fucking weird pictures are these? What the hell? What are the, some of these pictures are bizarre. It's just, there's, a, there's a Rin theme going on here. Some of these are just terrible. God, he's awful. It also prevents Misha from trying to covertly look at my answers over my shoulder. She might fool the in, in, inattentive teacher, but I can tell that what she's trying to look. I guess it's her best bet at passing the test. Doesn't make me feel any mercy though, so I ignore her and look around me. It's quiet. Too quiet. The only sounds in the classroom are the quiet shuffling of papers and Muto's constant coughing. It makes, me it makes my awareness of the surroundings slowly drift to the backstage of consciousness, giving room to other things. Oh god, here we go again. Vacation, huh? Some people will stay at the school, even over the holidays. Some will go back to their families. I don't know what to do. I should go buy a train ticket for my back trip back home, but I can't bring myself to do it. I bet I'm going to get a call from home again. Mum's going to pester me about when I'm coming back and I'm not going to know how to, what to answer. This is really lousy. In the current state of things of Rin, it feels like I, can't, I just can't, I can't just bail out, out of here and pretend we are through. And now she has other problems of her own. I thought that the exhibition opening would give her a breather, but I was sorely mistaken. The tangle just seems to thicken. A sharp knock on the door interrupts the quiet but frantic mood of the last 15 minutes of the exam. Come in. The opening door reveals the art- oh god. Uh oh. The art teacher, who steps in with his jacket, swirling him as though in a gust of wind. He glances at Muta, who glances back at him. A frown sp oh shit. A frown spreads simultaneously on both their faces as the men measure each other with their gazes. Excuse me, can I borrow Mr. Naki for a moment? Excuse me, Mr. Naya, but we're in the middle of an exam here. It's the Joker. It's a fuck. It's a Riddler. It's a fucking Riddler. A chilly atmosphere suddenly spreads in the middle of the summer afternoon as the two men try to stare down each day each other down. Don't fight the Batman. This is urgent, and it seems that Naki has already finished. Both men turn to look at me, staring at me like a pair of ba basilisks trying to petrify a tasty snack. It's true that I've been idle for a good while now, so Namir is right, but... Nagi, would you like to check your answer one more time? Mudo speaks of an odd annotation, weighing certain words as if trying to send a message. Say, would you like to... Wait, you should not leave. The pressure from their stares makes me rapidly shake my head, which is apparently interpreted as an answer of some sort. Very well, Nagi. Go with Mr. Nami if you please. You just chose, you just chose, you just chose the fucking Riddler over Batman. What's wrong with you? Take your bag of you and bring your test paper to my desk. To your desk. You have a nice vacation. Uh, uh you too, teacher. The entire world, well, at least the classroom seems to hold its breath just for me. Putting the exam on hold until I stand up, collect my stuff and walk to the door. I can feel the stares in the back of my neck. My classmates probably think I'm in for some detention or something. On the last day of school before summer vacation. He's gonna beat the shit out of you now. I don't know where the teacher wants from me, but I can guess it's probably, it's probably, it's probably is not detention. And also that it probably has something to do with Rin again. Normally it doesn't what take me anywhere, contenting himself the hallway as it's completely abandoned. Do you know where Tezuka is? So she's trying to avoid the teacher. Path of the course, probably. I wonder if she realizes that she can't avoid dealing with this indefinitely. 
I have no idea. You probably asked from her home. You probably asked from her home room next door. Of course I have. I've searched every nook and cranny of his blasted school the, and the girls' dorm. You're the last one to see her since yesterday, and you're her friend. Welcome me here. Are you worried? I am, but I don't know what I could do. Rin did something incomprehensible yesterday, even for her. She seemed really confused. Maybe she just wants some time to think then. I got the feeling that she had second thoughts about having that exhibition. Or something. She really didn't explain what was wrong. What second thoughts? I don't know, just got that feeling. I'm being a little dishonest with the teacher, but this is not something I should be meddling with. He came to me, yes. Why? Maybe he thinks I'm some sort of confident of friends. But I don't think I can help with this matter. The teacher huffs and scratches his head in confusion. What's up with that girl? Someone like her, she was always being so goal-driven. Goal-driven? Well, that really don't strike me as a word to describe Rin with. To me, she's always felt obsessive at best. Uh, I don't mean to be rude, but wasn't it you who pushed Rin to that, in, to that direction in the first place? Her goal is my goal. It's a mentor's job. Orange juice. Tropicana. I guess so. I just don't know if painting can make her happy. Pretty preposterous of you to say, Aki. He suddenly sounds pretty irate. Did I say something stupid? You don't understand, do you? It's not a question of happiness. For every gain, there's sacrifice to be made. There's no free lunch, but could I... Would I let that girl waste her talent if she had a moment of doubt? Never! Painting is work, just like any other. Suzuka might make it look like child's play to you, but she works hard every day to make her art. To become extraordinary, one has to make an extraordinary effort. The more the teacher talks, the more I feel that Rin doesn't think like that, even though I have no idea how she thinks. I can very well understand why she would sacrifice her summer vacation and make up for the lost classes and exams to get a chance for showing her heart, at showing her art. This is the path she has taken, and to go all the way, it's not easy. I know she is young, and things are hard for her, just like all the kids here in this school, but it's no excuse. He is finished. But do you have anything like, like what art is to Tezuka? No. That's right, that's right. I only have vague ideas of my future. No goal to shoot for, no dream to blindly reach for. Honestly, the, the only way he got his, the only one he got his life sorted in was fucking Emmys. I joined the art club in search of something I could be interested in, to get inspired by. Did I find something like that? Well, I found in the end was Rin. No, I don't have a passion like that. You have Rin. Then you can't understand. His flat statement allows no counter-argument, but she might not understand even herself. Still, I carry on arguing out of spite, if for nothing else. How could she not? She's been at it for so hard for the past few weeks, that she put off even coming to school. Not to say anything about attending class. Don't be ridiculous. I don't think I'm being ridiculous, but as I have no rebuttal, Lamia seems to consider this one a win. His win. At any rate, the opening was quite successful, despite Tezuka hardly showing up. Many people were interested in her work, and one piece was even sold for a reasonable price. That's nice, isn't it? Yes, it's fantastic news. I hoped Hazuka would come to her senses when she heard about this, but... He sighs and takes off his glasses, cleaning them against his jacket before putting them on his nose again. At any rate, I should be going. There's this mess to be settled with Sai and everyone. If you see Tezuka, please ask her to come see me. Otherwise, have a nice vacation. Thanks. After he's disappeared around the corner, I ponder where Rin could really be. Feels like she is not one, but at least half a dozen of these secret places. She's probably at the fort tree. I balance between the desire to solve this tangle and drop it, and to drop it for good. The disused classroom is just a few feet away. What to do? As I push open the door, only the shadows greet me from the inside. Hey there. She's standing in the middle of the sunlit room, peering through the gaps of the curtains onto the yard. Like so often before, she doesn't start or jump, just calmly waits for me to make the first move. Ooh. It's as if she's trying to become a permanent part of the furniture. The teacher is looking for you. A blank, a blank look over her shoulders is all I get, accompanied by a cryptic not expression on her face. Are you looking for me too? Nah, I already found you, didn't I? Did you? 
She furrows her brow, looking so puzzled, and it makes me wonder what if the question was asked in all seriousness. Maybe it was. Are you talking metaphorically now? Do you mean like eels, caves, and dark stormy nights? I am bad at talking like that. The abruptly ending greeting gives me the chance to close the door behind me and sit down on a dust-covered desktop. Rin stays standing, but at least she turns around. I soon wish she hadn't, though, so oppressive is her expectant stare. This is her place, and I'm an intruder. Although a tolerated one, despite that, she still waits for me to say something. If, if I only knew what. The sunlit silence presses me towards decisions. I came here without really thinking about what I would do, apart from delivering Nami as a short message in case Rin was here. She was, and now I don't know what else to say. What else should I say? I hover between my two options for a moment. Rin being troubled troubles me too. It's a surprising revelation, almost as big as realizing that she really is troubled, that she really, that she really is troubled was. Nothing I could do would probably help, and I might be partially to blame too. Does it mean I should just wash my hands off it? I don't think so. So, what's wrong? Sad music. Nothing. She starts to turn away again, as if trying to physically exit the conversation she doesn't want to have. Rin, stop trying to dodge me, or I'll leave. Okay. Do you want me to leave? Are you still angry? It took us, or was it only me, ten seconds to swap the conversation into this. I wish we could erase the past, or failing that, forget all about it. I've wished for that more than once in the last few months. Let's put that aside for the time being, alright? If you say so. I do. So, what's wrong? Sai and Nomira were not too happy that you just ran off yesterday. You left them in quite a pinch, and I suppose the teacher wants some kind of an explanation. It seemed like you just threw out everything you had worked for, and I don't get why. Did I make a mistake? My reprimanding and her flat answer goes so much against the usual expectations and presumed interactions. It might just as well as well be somebody else talking. Neither of us is like we used is of, of, is like, neither of us is like we used to be. Neither of us is like we used to be. Neither of us are like we used. Neither of us are like we is. That's weird. Is is the right word? Though? This stuff, constricting feeling I get every time I look at Rin nowadays seems to be mirrored in her own behavior. I hate things that got. I hate I hate things that go irreparably wrong. Ever since February, I've hated them. What can I say? The question is trailed by a compelling, quizzical stare that makes me sigh and frown. Conversations nobody wants to have are the worst. I don't know, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it probably was pretty stupid. She responds with a sigh of her own, although hers is not nearly as heavy as mine was. I just couldn't do it. But why? What's wrong? A pause, a furrowed brow, a quiet voice. Let it be, Hisao. I don't think I can really explain it in a way that would make sense. Yeah, Rin doesn't want to have this conversation either. That may be for the better. But how rare of her to admit that she even that even she has some kind of limits. I always thought Rin was all but ignorant of her tendency to get distracted. So much that she inadvertently obfuscates everything she says. You never explain anything in a way that would make sense. Nobody else has ever asked me to. I guess that's how it is. But I always wanted to make sense of you, to find out who you are. I still want to. Can't you see? I know you can't, but I do. Is that why I keep this up? It pains you as much as it pains me. It's unlikely to be of any use to either. Of any use to either. We did things and said things that can't be undone. It's as if you and me being close to each other just hurts us both, but we still deliberately keep doing it. Is that silly? Isn't that silly? Even now I can see how you force yourself to respond, even though you owe me nothing. Even if it's hard to talk about things like this, why? Why is it that you paint? I... Because I don't know what else I could do. It's like this feeling that there is no choice. That it's the only possibility. Like when there are only watermelon flavoured popsicles left in the store, but you need to eat a popsicle. Her poor metaphor aside, she didn't really answer anything. If possible, this makes even less sense than not knowing. But if you don't want to paint... Not like that. You had to come to this school even though you probably didn't want to have a heart attack. 
She pauses, frowning as if something in what she said didn't please her. At least I think you would. Her careful follow-up is followed in turn by another shorter pause with another smaller frown. Would you like to have a heart attack? No, I wouldn't, and I didn't want to. But you're doing fine, aren't you? Or are you still sad about it? Rin's question makes me realize I haven't really thought about my illness for weeks. Aside from chugging down my medication every day, there has been no need to concern myself with my broken heart. Which I'm not only thankful for. Which I'm only, which I'm only thankful for, really. Getting to know new people, a new school, a new town, a new life. It's all caught... It, it, it all has caught me and made the past fade away. No. <laughs> I guess I didn't even dwell on the past indefinitely. I guess I can't even... Pa can't, I can't dwell on the past indefinitely. See? Even watermelon doesn't really taste bad if you have to eat it. Her heart, I get that, I get that. She does art just because, yeah. Her half-nonsensical closure seems to put an end to the subject in Rin's mind. So I just nod in uncertain confirmation. There are two kinds of silences. Awkward ones and that you want to break and comfortable ones that you don't mind. The first kind is bad because it makes your thoughts go aw awry like mine do now. Looking at Rin makes me feel bad. I don't want to feel this. Looking at Rin makes me feel exhausted. I really tried my best. She tried too. I have no idea. But we ended up like this, and she ended up screwing up her exhibition opening. It feels like we are at a dead end. There's no direction to continue to. Hey, this is supposed to be the good ending. I have no idea where this is going. I reached out, I reached out for her yesterday, thinking it would be the last time. She walked away. I want to be me. What the heck does that even mean? Rin, if anyone, is most definitely herself. I feel kind of relieved that I'm not the one to blame, but it's still great on my mind. Why did she run away? It didn't make sense yesterday. It doesn't make sense today. The things she felt, yet the things, the the things she f said, fe feel like the yeah, poop in my mouth, in my face, poop all over my face. Fucking words. The things she said feel like they should make sense, but they just don't to me. To me, that was the wrong inflection there. You know, about that thing you just said. Which one of them? Um, painting. Sai said something like that to me before. That a true artist does not paint because she wants to, but because she must. And I've been wondering about what she said. Why do artists have to paint? My question is probably pretty stupid. At least Rin looks at me in the blank way that seems to say so. I don't know. Am I an artist? Well, you paint stuff, and you have an exhibition too. I'd say you qualify. I think I still don't, but okay. The thinking pause that follows seems to last for half an eternity. Unlike most people, Rin doesn't flavor her thinking pauses by body language or saying like, saying like or um or anything. I've noticed that I might prefer her way. Actually, it's a good idea. I, I always try to do that, to be honest with you. I hate when I go like, uh, there you go. See that? I hate when I go like, uh... Uh, I hate doing that. I'd rather just go quiet and think about what I say as opposed to going, uh, or, uh, like, I'd rather go silent. I like that. I've tried that. It's very hard, though, to adjust the way you do stuff. The usual way even annoys me, as if people were so infatuated by the sound of their own voice, they just have to keep making some noise, even when they are just thinking what they could say next. Rin just... Comes to a full stop and whilst, while she is thinking. It's disconcerting because reacting to people spacing out is always hard. She comes off as less obnoxious. I think I want to, someone to see what's inside me. Not the way doctors and serial killers do. <laughs> the way that doesn't make me feel lonely. This is what you call metaphorical, you see? Please don't lecture me about self-evident things. It's not self-evident that this is self-evident. So you present a painting to someone who, ex someone and expect them, expect them to magically see a glimpse of your soul? It's not like that. It's just like, like that, but not really. Don't you understand? I do, and I don't. You know, I feel a little bit, I feel a little bit of despair every time you ask that question. What question? About whether I understand you or not. She seems almost surprised at my clarification. Oh, it's not really a question. It's one of those kind of... It's one, it's one of those kind that you don't have to answer. Rhetorical. Yeah, that's the word. A question that is not a question. It's a rhetorical question. How oh, nice. That reminds me. 
It doesn't really make sense. What kind of a question is one that isn't a question? A rhetorical one. What kind of an answer is an answer that doesn't answer anything? Is that a rhetorical question? You are not funny. <laughs> but if you don't like it, would you like me to say something else instead? I don't have any good ones though. How about your pants are on fire? <laughs> this can be our secret language. Rin's honest to goodness silliness made twice more ridiculous by the fact that I know she is dead serious derails me like it always does. It's some kind of safety lock to prevent me from becoming too much of a worry wart, dragging, e dragging even my own thoughts off the ground where they should be. It makes me f smile confusedly, but only on the inside. Even though the corners of my mouth are not drawing into a grin, I'm still impressed by her ease of wrecking any attempt at being too serious. Could she? Should she? Will so? Forget and ignore things that bug her? Things that bother her? Could she, should she will so, be free of whatever burden being her means? Or am I the only one who feels burdened by being myself? No thanks. But still, the times when I feel that I'm the, on the same page as you are pretty rare. It feels like there's a huge gap and sometimes you just go to the other side and I don't. I don't have any way to reach you from where I am. It's like you and in some completely different place at times. Even though you were right here. That's right. There's an insurmountable discon 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 uh, discontinuity discontinuity an imaginable imaginary glass wall that blocks comprehension from happening. There might be such a gap between two people, but with Rin, it feels more tangible. Rin does not react to my thoughts, not to the one I uttered aloud, nor the ones I did not. It's even worse than art. It's even worse if art. I'm not very good at art, I admit it. I joined the art club because I thought it, would be, it could be interesting. And I guess it's like, it is. I like art. I like your art too. But like, just like you, I can't comprehend, comprehend it. Comprehend it. I can't comprehend it. And I'm pretty sure nobody really can. This seems to be worry her slightly. Do you think so? Yeah, I guess that art is meant to be interpreted, not understood. That's how I put it. That's a sad thought. I guess it might feel like one. Does it make you feel sad for yourself? Rin thinks about this for a while, and then shakes her head surprisingly vehemently. The first thing she focuses her eyes on afterwards is me. Both of these things make me glad and relieved. That's good, isn't it? Anyway, you should go see the teacher and apologize properly. I think he's worried about you. Can you do that? This time she nods her head. Only it's not as vehement. The hallway is empty, almost in intimidating. Nomi's office is the art classroom at the other end of the third floor hallway. Our steps echo disturbingly. The atmosphere is unlike on a normal afternoon. It feels like the school knows that nobody will be coming back for a month too. The door is open, but not very inviting. I'll, um, wait outside. Nodding barely noticeably, Rin strides in without stopping, and naturally without knocking. Maybe that's why it takes a few seconds before I hear the teacher's voice from inside. We'll leave it there. Find out next time what happens with Rin and herself. I'm going to see this to the end. I feel like I'm nearly at the end now. Thanks for watching, guys. I have been Milby. This has been Katara Shoujo. It's all serious right now. And I will see you next time. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. Bye!